ready? All right. And works three. Let's get it going. We want to thank all the exhibitors and hand tool enthusiasts for coming to Handworks. Thanks also. Thanks also to uh, all the good folks of the village of Atlanta for uh, all their hospitality. All right, before we get to the main presentation, we're going to invite uh, Mike Simpson up and he's going to sing the uh, national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow. <laughs> <laughs> the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the godfather of grain, the sultan of steel, the patriarch of Padat, my favorite, the sheriff of Chateauens, I give you the original hand tool enthusiast, none other than the Woodwright himself, Roy Underhill. This morning, I thought everybody had gained so much weight in the last <laughs> two years, so I realized what it was. Everybody's been taking shaving, taking shavings, and stuffing them under their uh, sh uh, shirts here. Uh, it's good uh, insulation. Get going here. Thank you. Thank you all. Any of the sirens here from last uh, time we got together? Are you out there? Yeah, well, welcome back. Uh, welcome again, the Knights Who Say Me. Uh, welcome back. You're all here. I'm not saying it's a geeky crowd, but I heard two guys arguing over the relative merits of a Stanley number four and a Stanley four and a half. They were arguing away in Klingon. So, uh, maybe a little bit uh, a little bit geeky crowd. We have one family to thank for this, so let's give our, our organizers a, a great hand. Thank you. It's a brilliant thing you put together. Uh, so now, do y'all know where you are? No. Where are you? No, no, you don't know where you are. You are on an old German commune. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, you're on an old German commune. That is very appropriate uh, for us to be, or at least for me. Uh, now, I, and for all of us, you think about the German contribution to uh, woodworking, the German uh, bench they call it. You know what I mean with the vice on the end, uh, Schnitzelbank, all that stuff. The you know the shaving horse comes from uh, Germany. It's a great, uh, this is what makes American woodworking so strong. All these different cultures coming together. And the beer. And the beer, yes. <laughs> yes, you know, this is the largest gathering of, uh, of uh, in, how should I say, proponents of alcohol-powered woodworking in the country uh, right now. So, good, very good point. <laughs> Uh, excellent. Uh, in fact, you know, they do the schnitzelbank, they even have a song about it. So, you know, the songs and the inventiveness of the culture, just great. And, uh, and it did, I say, uh, the language that, uh, has, the richness that's been brought into the American, the English language here uh, from all the different nationalities. You think of the German language, uh, what other language has a word 
for the guilty pleasure we feel at the misfortune of others, right? That's schad schadenfreude. See, it's, oh, that's great. They got a word for it. The guilty pleasure we feel at the misfortune of others. I was uh, showing my class a uh, Stanley 55, uh, in, in, you know, to everybody explaining how, here's a Stanley 55. This is a combination plane. It weighs 18 pounds. It has 4,800 moving parts, and it tries to do everything. And uh, he said to me, oh, yes, uh, one of the students, he was German, a uh, professor, and he says to me, ah, you know, we have a name for that in German. I said, yeah, yeah, das ist ein eigenlegen Wollmilchsau. I said, yeah, an no, eigenlegen Wollmilchsau, that is an egg-laying wool milk pig. <laughs> <laughs> so you see a, a Stanley 55, you can nod knowingly and say, ah, eigenlegen Wollmilchsau, yeah. <laughs> So he had also had, there's another, uh, 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 this wonderful student, uh, they had just finished their dovetailing for building a tool chest. And they finished the dovetailing, and uh, I said, all right, everybody, you've done it now, we're gonna move on, we'll be doing the planing now, we're gonna be fitting up the bottom, you're done with dovetailing, you've been dovetailing for two days, it's now time for all of us to sing the happy dovetail song. Jack, you lead us off. And you know, there was this laughter in the room, <laughs> And so we start moving on to the next uh, task. I look over, and, and Gunnar is looking very unhappy over there. And uh, I said, Gunnar, what's wrong? Are you okay? He said, when do we sing the song? <laughs> said, well, Gunnar, that's just a joke. We don't do that. And, 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 and he said, no, we must sing. <laughs> Together. We have a, you know, so I, so I thought, well, that's what we need to do here. Uh, so I have, I have taken the great liberty of rewriting a familiar song, I hope, and I have some uh, cheat sheets uh, ready here for you to join in on the chorus, if, uh, if you will be uh, so helpful to me, all right? So you've got a cheat sheet there ready? Are we ready on this one here? Oh, uh, let me bring up my, one of my uh, uh, proper assistants here. I am passing on uh, the uh, show to a new generation. Uh, uh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so to be helping my lovely assistants here down and down on the floor here, they can help me out uh, to help you join in on the chorus. So y'all ready to sing together? It will help us get warm together. All right. So this is it. Uh, and it's rather spontaneous. I think you'll recognize it. Those of you of a certain generation. Uh, well, if not, you'll help out the younger folks to get together. Because what does this remind you of? Everybody gathered here for two days of peace, love, and understanding. <laughs> From here on out, it's a free concert. <laughs> I came upon a child of God. He was walking along the road. And I asked him, where are you going? And this he told me. He said, I'm going down to a man of farm. I'm going to join in a handworks band. I'm going to work me some wood by hand and set my soul free. All right, now everybody. <laughs> Beside you, I have come here to stop the smog, and I brought me along a log for spring pole turning. Yes, and maybe it is just the time of year, and maybe it's the time of man, but I know that it's the time of hand, and hands are for working. Everybody, we are sawdust, we are shaving, and we got to. We were a couple of thousand strong, and everywhere was a song and celebration. And I dreamed I saw those long jointer planes lying rusted through the land, jumping into everybody's hands across our nation. Finally, we are sawdust. We are shit. Back to hand play. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, don't use the brown whetstones. Keep away from the towers. <laughs> part of uh, the presentation. <laughs> I mean, so, so there, there's songs everywhere. I, I was looking, I just happened upon a book, always looking for books, thinking I can interest uh, uh, folks in them. Uh, I came upon this book in French. So we're talking about the German, the French. Uh, this is an 1880s uh, dictionary of terms of art. The Lexique des Termes des Arts par Jules Edlen, 1884. And I was looking through it, looking for technical things that might help me, you know, so I could seem smart. And I looked at this, it's had a, a, an entry for a thing called, I was looking under saws, with interest in the big French saws, and it had a thing called the C d'Atelier. The C d'Atelier, you ever heard of that? What does that translate? The workshop saw, the C d'Atelier, the saw of the workshop. I thought, okay, well, I'll see what that is, the saw of the workshop. Saw of the workshop, what could that be? And I. I started tr I translated, of course, uh, what, being Google. Uh, so you translate it. <laughs> it says, uh, see d'atelier. And this is uh, for real. You can see it right here. Uh, actually, this is for real. I have to, I have to point that out. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's indeed, I've translated the see d'atelier. This is a term of artistic slang. The saw of the workshop. Now, this is 1884. So the saw of the workshop is a song of desired monotony repeated to excess. This repetition is intended to aggravate and torment the listener. <laughs> For a C d'atelier to be successful, it must not only attain that goal, but must exceed it. <laughs> there are practical versions of this assault, like the bucket of water balanced over the front door to fall on the head of the newcomer, the master. But there are also C d'atelier saws that are spontaneous and improvised which are allusions to events of the day, which express the spirit of the young men in the workshop. And I was thinking, what the heck is that? A seed I tell you, this is so cool. I said, we don't do that in here. And then, not a few days later, all right, I am mixing up some uh, glue. You know, use the ground glue, the high glue, grinding it, you know, it's all ground up, and I'm pouring water in it and stirring it, getting it ready for the class to glue up everything, because we use the old hot glue. And uh, one of the students asked me, he said, what, well, what is that? I said, what's in your room? Well, it's, it's, a, uh, it's high glue. So what's it made of? I said, well, ground up animals. He said, oh, my God, I'm going to use that. And uh, you know, I said, okay, well, uh, we've got a, you know, some stirring. And it starts, this little verse starts coming into my head. Uh, you once were a cow, but now you're glue, moo, moo, moo. <laughs> Now you're glue, and that's too bad for you. <laughs> and uh, I think, wow. Yeah, that's a little after, and he's looking really uncomfortable at bench number four. And, uh, uh, yeah, is it, you know, it's like one of the other guys across the room. He's going to say, let me stir that a little bit. He's going to say, oh, yeah, yeah. You once were a horse, but now you're glue. <laughs> but you're not too slow. You once were as fast as Seattle slew, and now you're stuck as glue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is terrible. <laughs> and look at there's a guy, bench number four, he's kind of grinding away. And he, looks, and he comes over and says, he start, looks me square in the face and says, Hey, you once were a star with your own how to, but you came on screw when you couldn't outdo Mr. Schwartz in an interview, and now you're stuck in <laughs> <laughs> And I said, The French have a word for that, so we, have it, so we do it, we just don't have a word for it. Uh, so that was a C d'Atelier coming uh, spontaneously out of it. Now, you only ever irritated each other in the shop? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I get on with the, the glue. Uh, I, I don't know if you ever seen this, but back at, I remember saw. Uh, have you ever heard of your old your, <laughs> your old carpenter was a mighty clever fellow? Have you ever heard anything start like that? Your old woodworker, he was a mighty clever fellow. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know what he would? Do? They made things to last back then, didn't they? Yes, sir. <laughs> Your old carpenter was a mighty clever fellow. Well, I read one of these uh, in one of the books years ago, uh, talking about this. 
at the issue of glue. He said, your, your old chair maker, he was a mighty clever fellow. When he glued up a chair, he would always choose a glue that was weaker than the wood. That way, when the chair broke, why, it was the glue that gave way and not the wood. <laughs> I think, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Here we are back in 1780. Hey, I'm an old chair maker here. Let's see, I'm ready to glue up that chair I've been working on. Now, what choices do I have? Let me look here up on the shelf here. Because uh, I know I want to have a weak glue. Should I use the oh, uh, epox of E? No, no, that would be too strong. I won't use that. What have I got here? Uh, old Yeller of tightly bonding. That would, oh no, 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 that would be too strong. I can't use that. Nay, nay. Ah, ye glue super, of course, that will hold this. Oh no, no. Again, too strong. I must have weakness in my ch Oh, look here. <laughs> Here's my old hide glue. I'll pour a little beer into it, and that will weaken it so it will break. Amazing the choices I have back here in 1780 to build my chair with. <laughs> so, you know, he's, and you just see the final scene that this guy is painting is the guy is reaching with his weakened glue that he's made so that the glue will break first. And while well, with his other hand, he's reaching around to pat himself on the back for being a mighty clever fellow. So we project this stuff back into the past. Oh, they made everything so great. We project all that glue back into the past. And so I, you know, as a proper historian, have always worked to do this uh, correctly, <laughs> based on evidence, right? All right. I got hired as the master. Some of you know this uh, about the working with the axe. In fact, would you mind handing me my, my axe there? I had started at Colonial Williamsburg. I was hired as the master house right. And I said, well, I'm not going to just build the houses the way they built them back in Virginia in the 1770s. I'm going to have my crew work with the same tools that they were using in the 1770s. I'm not going to use these, <laughs> these ridiculous modern axes. I'm going to be accurate. I'm going to go down to the archaeologists here at Colonial Williamsburg and ask them to find me the axes from the 1770s. I want them precisely dated. And then I will have our skilled blacksmiths make them for me, replicate them. And so I did. went down to the archaeologists, talked to them, said, listen, we're going to, I've got a crew coming. We need axes that were uh, dated to the 1770s. Do you have any of those where you can really precisely date? We said, yeah, we have the great stratigraphy, you know, the layers in the wells. And we have some axes. In fact, some of them were preserved in the anaerobic conditions with the handles still in them. And if you want to study those, that's great. You know, so I got the I said, wonderful, because I'm going to have the perfect axes for the guys to work with. So I had, took these samples, and they were odd. They would have very long, very little pole on the end, long, uh, heavy, the oddly weighted with a strange uh, thin handle. But nevertheless, these are the ones they were using in the 1770s. So I had that evidence. The blacksmiths made them. I put the helves on them. They were all ready to go. And we head out to the woods with my crew's been hired. They said, gentlemen, we're going to drop this tree the first time in 200 years that a tree's been dropped with the proper 1770s axe. These were based on the stratigraphy of evidence found in the well. And so we start, and I take the, I will take the first blow, gentlemen. And this shock wave just shoots up the handle into my hand. Dang, it stings like a bee. I said, good creep. I said, Mark, well, Mark, Mark, you go ahead and try it. I'm usually ready to go. You give it a whack, because uh, these are the proper axes now. I said, and he starts, twing, bang, and it bounces off, about takes my head off. And we work on this thing. So we just, I finally said, well, just give it a little, kind of push it at the trip. You know? <laughs> and we're just dying. Man, our hands are stung. Back is aching, you know, just trying to, it's just, just ridiculous. You'd never know that such a simple tool could hurt you so bad. We finally get this tree down. It looks like beavers on crack went out. <laughs> and, you know, we try to get it back into town. And, it was, of course, cutting into a car at the end is the archaeologist who gave me the axes to have replicated. And uh, she said, oh, how did, I see you've got a tree. You have that work with you. I said, God, I don't know. Maybe we, we just don't know how to use it yet because, you know, her hands are blistered and stung and... I don't know what's the problem with it, but you, indeed you say these are the axes uh, they were using here in, in Virginia in 1770. Uh, we do have a, you, you, you sure that's right? He said, well, no, it's kind of a skewed sample, she says. No, I, actually what you, what you have, what you have replicated there are the, the axes they were throwing down wells in, <laughs> in the 1770s. 
so, um, uh, you know, or it could, it could be those were just the axes that belonged to the idiots of the 18th century. So, <laughs> Oh, this well, this is the worst axe I have ever seen. I'm throwing it down the well. It will never bother anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so you never know what's going to happen with history can throw you off. But let me finish. Now, listen, listen I, I tore out everything. This is going to be brief because I threw out everything that is the least bit political uh, to, to, for this talk this morning. So that's why it's going to be very quick and conclude quickly because I don't have anything. But actually, I do have... A modest proposal, because indeed you have met my my substitute for the show now. As she's coming in, she's going to take over. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Uh, I'm going into politics. I am. I have. I have a three-point plan. I'm going to bring to everybody, and I wanted to start here because this, this is the place where everything begins. Where else but Iowa to begin to begin a campaign? All right. <laughs> this right here, and I want to make my speech, I got me, as I brought my own stump, we're all set now, <laughs> I have a three-point plan, we're going to address health care, I'm going to address health care, uh, I'm going to address uh, global, uh, the climate change, and uh, uh, economics, so if I may start, everybody here is worried about health care, right, everybody's got problems with health care, all right, Can Canadians, Canadians, we don't want to, that's unbecoming, <laughs> Kind of superior attitude, yeah. You want to make, retain your status as junior Americans. You want, to be, you want to be quiet now. All right, so I got a health care, and it starts right here. In fact, all of you have signed up for it uh, today. You know, you look around, you see how young everybody looks, how healthy everyone looks in here. It's because every one of you has signed up for a mana care. Yes, a mana care. It's based on the tool chest of Dorian Gray. <laughs> so your tools get older and you get younger. Okay? So that's all we need. The more hand tools you pick up now, the more you work, the better you're going to be. Am I right? Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. That's a mannequin. That's uh, point number one. Second, uh, how many of you have enough uh, wood stored up now? <laughs> Who's got enough wood sequestered? Uh, wood. Uh, got lumber? Who's got enough lumber? All right, anybody? Yeah, I see one person. All right, yeah, I want you to meet outside with Megan, right outside the door. For those of you who haven't got, you haven't got enough wood, right? It's in the garage. It's under the bed. It's in the closet. It's in the bed. I mean, it's everywhere. You got enough wood. Is this causing any tension between you and a mate? Right? Causing a problem. What you want to say is, dear, what is this stuff made of? You think I have too much wood? You know what that wood is made of? What? It's made of carbon. Where do you want that carbon? You want it in our garage, under the bed, in the closet? No. Or do you want it up in the atmosphere, turning this place into a hothouse? So it's up to you. We can either have it up there cooking the planet, or it's going to be in our garage. That carbon, I'm sequestering carbon. And if you don't care about the planet, I do. So that's the, that's the uh, second part of my plan. Uh, third plan, uh, anybody economics now? Y'all work by hand, it's tough, I know. You're working by hand, you're working, you know, because you're competing with people who work by, yeah, 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 you know. All right, you're trying to make things by hand and sell them and make a living. All right, I have a plan for that too, and it's beginning right here. These are called handworks offsets. You know what I mean? You ever heard of environmental <laughs> offsets? Yeah. Okay, right. Well, what you do is, you know, you are, by working by hand, you are generating <laughs> offsets that people who work by machine can buy from you. So, so if somebody comes to your shop there, you're working away, you know, you're hand planing, and somebody comes to you and says, oh, I represent a company in China, we are going to, ha we're going to power sand 14,000 tables for Kmart, we want to buy the offset, here's a check for $15,000 for you to keep planing, all right? So those are hand work offsets, all right? All right, so finally, uh, finish up here. I, I've got to end up with so that was just my political part. Uh, so the only thing left was religion, I think. I have to... <laughs> and this is touchy. I know last time we had that big fight, and uh, you all we don't want to go through that. Uh, those of you, uh, and we've divided up the bar. Those of you who put your, uh, your planes face down on the bench over here, and those who put them on their sides over here. And we're all together. Uh, and it deals with this. So here's a song, right? 
All right, you all know what I'm leading up to. What is it? Yeah, the nib on the saw. There it is. Right there on the end, the nib on the saw. Now, it's all about belief and faith, and I know this divides people greatly, but we have got to get together here on this. And I'm going to bring us together, but I know the nib. You all see the nib on the saw? You know about the nib, the little tip right there on the end of the saw? And folks, going to say, what is that for? Now, I myself, all right, I'm going to come out right with it at the start. I am an existential aestheticist, uh, nibbonist. Among the Nibbonist school, there are the existential aestheticists. They say that this is just a derivative, a vestigial part of the original decorative uh, filigree that was kind of on Dutch hand saws, and that's all that left. So it has no purpose. It's just aesthetic. We're happy with it. It's fine. Move on. But no, there are the utilitarian Nibbonists. <laughs> And I know the Midwest is a hotbed of utilitarianism. A lot of folks uh, believe it has to be good for, for something. It must be good for something. They wouldn't put it on there just for nothing. No, there's got to be a use for that. So, of course, there are the, uh, the uh, Startarians, uh, utilitarianists. Uh, they uh, believe that it's used to start a cut. The Startarians are a very small sect. And I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we have the Gardarians. Uh, any Gardarian Nibbonists here? Yeah, that's all right. I'm not going to ask you to self-identify. That would be wrong. And you're welcome. <laughs> you are welcome in our country. <laughs> the Gardarian Nibbonists believe that this is to hold a little wooden guard that would go uh, down the length of, of the saw. So that's the Gardarian Nibbonists uh, of the utilitarian sect. And then, of course, the temperance, the temperance utilitarians. They believe, of course, that this is to hold the saw as it's dipped in the tempering bath and moves on down as it's hardened and tempered. Again, <laughs> I cannot talk. <laughs> we have freedom of religion. It's fine. All right. But I got to go to the truth. You can believe any of these, even what I believe. It doesn't matter because I want to tell you the truth right now. I've gone over from being a, a, an existentialist nibbonist to a conspiratorialist. <laughs> firmly believe that the nib was put on the end of the saw by the agents of Festool. <laughs> put there to divide us, those of us who should be together, to drive us apart. That's how I feel. Now, what it drives us, I was finish up. Now, a lot of y'all are in, in, uh, moved into the media like I, I <laughs> to have. Uh, folks do uh, have like blogs and writes and stuff like that. Uh, did a lot of you do that? I know. You know, on the big or small scales, you, everybody's in the media. And so when you're out there as a public um, uh, individual, uh, I don't know who the writer was who said this, uh, but do you all get a lot of mail and uh, feedback to your sites when you are, are public? Wait, uh, let me tell you, you do. You do. <laughs> you do. And I want to say, not all people who write uh, to writers like myself. Not all people who write to writers are weird, but all weird people write to writers. <laughs> and if you want to generate some mail, I tell you, uh, for your site, yeah, I give this to you now. I just say, as in conclusion, I just, it doesn't matter. All these things we've talked about, they're not uh, controversial in the least. All you have to do, if you want to generate uh, a big audience, is use the expression pre-drill <laughs> in your general conversation. Just say pre-drill, oh, I pre-drilled these holes, and the mail will pour in. Dear Mr. Underhill, I have written to you, the public broadcasting system, Mr. Abrams, to the International Court of Justice, and you still persist in using the expression pre-drill. You cannot pre-drill, you can only drill. Is it gonna take direct action against you and your family to make you stop this act? Must we come after you? P.S. Love your show. <laughs> and, uh, it, so that's a, that's a gift. To, I, I gotta say, it is a gift to all of us. These differences. Uh, riding out here, we happen. I just happened to glance over uh, on the side of the road, and I saw this wonderful hand-painted sign that said "Pre-picked strawberries." <laughs> So pre-picked, so before picked, they're, they're strawberries. They're, I mean, they're, what we want are post-picked strawberries. But these are pre-picked. Okay, 
great. That's great. And you know, it was. It just made me delight in the differences. So this is a place uh, where glad hearts can reach a uh, great delight today. So thank you all for uh, letting me have this chance to speak with you, and I, I just wish you all a wonderful day. And and if I may say, may the grain be with you always. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Enjoy the rest of the